Ernest Orlando Lawrence was an American nuclear physicist. He is well known for his invention of the cyclotron, the ancestor to all particle accelerators today. Being the Nobel Prize winner for physics in 1939, Ernest was an influential person in science. Ernest was born on August 8, 1901 in Canton, South Dakota. Growing up, he was very skinny and tall. He was the son of two Norwegian immigrants and had a younger brother named John. His father, Carl Lawrence, was the superintendent of the school district he would soon attend. His mother, Gunda Jacobson, noticed Ernest had a scientific mind at a young age. As a child, Ernest was very curious, always trying to learn as much as possible. When he was two years old, he found a box of matches and set his clothes on fire. Thankfully, his mother was able to put out the fire. According to his mother, although Ernest was very mature for his age, he still had the enthusiasm of a young kid. His best friend growing up, Merle Tuve, was also interested in science. Together, Ernest and Merle built a radio transmitting station when they were only 10 years old. Ernest later looks back on this moment as being a key step in an invention of the cyclotron. Ernest received his high school education from Canton High School. In 1922, he received his bachelor's degree in physics from the University of South Dakota. Originally, he went to college for pre-med, but a professor named Lewis Ackley got him interested in physics, specifically electromagnetism. Ackley became Ernest's private tutor. Ernest later attended the University of Minnesota and received his master's degree. Three years later, Ernest earned his PhD in physics from Yale University. After completing college, Ernest stayed at Yale for three years, becoming the Associate Professor of Physics. At this time, he was offered to come to Berkeley to teach there. Although Yale had a better physics department and better pay, Ernest accepted the offer. At Berkeley, he would be able to experiment more than teach, which he found very appealing. In 1930, Ernest became the youngest professor at Berkeley. 1929 was the year of Ernest's most famous invention, the cyclotron. The cyclotron accelerates particles to high velocities without the use of high voltages. This is accomplished by using electric and magnetic fields. This machine could be used to create new elements by bombarding nuclei with the accelerated particles. Ernest thought of this design while browsing periodicals. He was reading a theory by Rolf Widerow on ion acceleration. He couldn't understand the article, as it was written in German, but when he looked at the accompanying diagram, he came up with the idea for the cyclotron. Ernest began to construct a prototype. The first cyclotron was 4 inches in diameter and made out of brass and sealing wax. The cyclotron is composed of two D-shaped regions called Ds. There's a small gap in the middle of the Ds with an electric field where the particle accelerates. A particle is placed in the middle that is accelerated by the electric field onto the first D. A magnetic field on the D bends the particle's path in a semicircle back to the middle section. The particle is accelerated again through the center, gaining velocity on each pass. Eventually, the particle is shot out. This invention led to the discovery of over 100 new radioactive isotopes. With his brother Dr. John Lawrence, Ernest looked to find new ways for the cyclotron to be used medically and biologically. Ernest encouraged other labs to use his invention and helped build cyclotrons for them. Ernest wanted to make larger cyclotrons to accelerate particles to greater speeds, but he did not have the lab space nor the engineering experience to do it. He would need a larger lab. The radiation lab, also known as Rad Lab, was built in 1936 as a part of Berkeley. Ernest was put at the head of the lab. Ernest and his scientists worked alongside engineers as equals. This was revolutionary at the time, because this was the first lab to do this. Every Monday night, Ernest held what he called a journal club, where lab members met to share ideas. With a bigger lab, he was able to build a 37-inch cyclotron. This cyclotron led to the discovery of artificial particles known as mesons as well as antiparticles. In 1939, Ernest planned to build a huge cyclotron, 184 inches in diameter. He planned to use it, as he put it, to unlock the vast storehouse of nuclear energy. However, 
Before it could be built, World War II began. Ernest focused on the war effort, greatly helping the development of the atomic bomb. Ernest was able to solve the problem of separating uranium-235 from uranium-238 by using a cyclotron. Because of their small difference in mass, Ernest thought that the isotopes could be separated by magnetic fields. Thus, in 1942, he and other scientists converted a 37-inch cyclotron to a mass spectrograph he called a calotron. The new machine was able to separate the two isotopes. 96 calotrons were built to produce uranium-235 during the war. Ernest also helped the war effort by establishing a radar program at MIT and the Sonar Development Program for Anti-Submarine Warfare in San Diego. After the war ended, Ernest returned to basic nuclear research. He continued to improve on his cyclotron, later making one called Bevatron. This machine was key in the discovery of the antiproton. However, when the Soviet Union exploded their first nuclear device in 1949, Ernest became involved with weapons again. The United States government was looking to build a second nuclear weapons lab. Ernest offered the Rab Labs satellite site in Livermore Valley as a possible location, as well as his personal oversight of the new project. In 1952, Livermore Laboratory was established as a branch of the Rad Lab. Ernest did not work on weapons there, but he often visited the lab to see what they were working on. A few years later, Ernest traveled to Geneva to negotiate a treaty with the Soviet Union in order to ban nuclear testing. He traveled in spite of having colon inflammation. The strain was too much, and it led to his death in 1956. In his honor, the labs he worked at, Berkeley and Livermore, were named after him. Also, element 103 on the periodic table has been named Laurentium in his name. He left behind six children and his wife, Mary Kimberly. Ernest will be remembered for his unique insight in the scientific world. Physics and science would not be the same today without his incredible inventions. In the words of Luis Alvarez, another Nobel Prize winner in physics, Lawrence will always be remembered as the inventor of the cyclotron, but more importantly, he should be remembered as the inventor of the modern way of doing science.